In this special blog, I would like to give some feedback on uh, several uh, definitions which we have introduced in week one. Uh, these definitions were not so clear to uh, several students, so I would like to go in more detail of into these definitions and concepts. Among those definitions were the difference between the irradiance and the spectral power density, uh, the difference between watt peak and efficiency, the equivalent sun hours and the capacity factor. Let's start with the irradiance and the spectral power density. So the irradiance is a unit parameter which describes power per unit area. So the unit is watt per square meters. It tells us how much energy in a certain time per area is incident on a surface. Note that this parameter doesn't have no spectral information. So if I have an irradiance of 500 watts per square meters, I don't know whether this is focused on the blue spectral part, the red or the infrared. So radiance only gives the power per unit area. Spectral power density has spectral information. It's the irradiance per spectral width. So if we choose a part in the blue spectrum, we have the spectral power density at a wavelength in the blue. Its unit is then watt per square meters per nanometer. So then per nanometer shows you already we selecting a spectral range. So it has spectral information. So the sp spectral power density shows whether the light incident on the surface contains more energy in the blue, in the visible, in the red or infrared. And the relation between both are indicated by uh, the integral over here. I is the irradiance, P lambda is the spectral power density. And if you integrate over the spectral power density, you will get the irradiance. As an example, let's take the AM 1.5 solar spectrum, which you also introduced in week one. And here you see the spectral power density. Again, it's expressed in this slide in watt per square meters per nanometer. The black line over here shows you the spectral power density. So it means that the irradiance is the surface underneath the spectral power density. So if you integrate this, you get the irradiance. Another concept which I've seen some discussions and questions about on the blog was the difference between watt peak and efficiency. So I would like to explain this by taking as an example for instance a solar module with an area of 1.5 square meters. So such a model can have a power output of for instance 300 watt peaks. This means that if we put this solar module under standard test conditions which are 100 watts per square meters at AM 1.5, the module would deliver 300 watts. So watt peak means the amount of power generated by a module or device under standard test conditions. The efficiency is the fraction of solar energy which is converted into electrical energy under standard test conditions again. So as we have discussed the efficiency is uh, the power coming out of a solar cell divided by the total power of light which we put into the solar cell. So if we now look again at this solar module of one square meters it means that the output on the standard test condition is 300 watts. It's the 300 watt peak. The power which we put in is 1.5 square meters times the irradiance of standard test conditions, which is thousands watts per square meter. So if we do this calculation, it means that for this example, we got 300 watts over 1500 watts. It means that the efficiency of the module is 20%. There were also some discussions on equivalent sun hours. Let's consider the situation that we have a daily irradiation of 3 kilowatt hours per square meters. This means that per day we have a total energy 
of 3 kilowatt on sunlight which is incident on one square meter. We can also express this in power times time. So the power is now, if we consider again standard test conditions, thousands watts per square meters or one kilowatt per square meter, times three hours. So it means to have these daily irradiations, if we have standard test conditions, we have three hours of standard test conditions incident on a surface. This is equal through three equivalent sun hours. And this is a handy uh, unit parameter as if we consider again for instance the module of 300 watt peaks it means that on one day on average if you have three sun hours on average it delivers 300 watts times three hours is 900 watt hours or 0 0.9 kilowatt hour of energy. So if we would have four sun hours per day it means that and the average daily irradiation would be 4 kilowatt hours per square meters. There is also a relation to, between sun hours and uh, the capacity factor. We also had some questions on the capacity factor. Let's look in more detail to the capacity factor of a solar module. Capacity factor is the effective time that an electric generator works on its maximum nominal power. And usually capacity factor is average over one year. So if we have four sun hours per day, which means that we have 360 times four hours of sun at one kilowatt per square meter irradiance per year. So it means that we have four hours per day that the solar cell is working on its maximum power or nominal power. So it means that we can calculate the capacity factor and the capacity factor is then over one year of course 365 days times the four hours divided by the total time which is in a year which is 365 days times 24 hours. And then you see that for a country where we have on average four sun hours per day the capacity factor is 16.7 percent. So the capacity factor depends on uh, the annual irradiance uh, of a certain country. For instance in the Netherlands uh, this would be around 12 to 13 percent where as you see over here four hours per day is a uh, typical uh, irradiation uh, which is in Spain there you would have a capacity factor for PV of 16.7 percent. So I hope that this uh, additional block uh, helped you in a better understanding of the um, uh, watt peak um, efficiency, irradiance, spectral power density function, sun hours and the capacity factor. I hope to see you back in week two and week three of the Solar Energy MOOC. See you!